Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and tonight I'm going to do something that I've only done once on this channel so far. I'm going to review a book, or at least discuss a book, and there are a couple of reasons for this. First off, spoiler alert, this book is excellent. Second, is it feels a niche that many people are looking for. It is that tome of teaching graphics for people that aren't awesome at math, and that is one rare unicorn. And third, it's also on sale right now. So let's start with the thing at the back, and then we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you some details about this particular book. So first off, let's talk about that sale. Right now, it is on in the Humble Computer Graphics Books bundle. I mentioned and did a video about this uh, three or four days ago when it launched, and I mean it when I said this is the best bundle Humble have launched as of yet. Now this book, unfortunately, is in the most expensive tier, but on the bright side, that tier is only 15 bucks. And the book we are talking about today is 3D Math Primer for Graphics and Game Development. So you head on over to Humble, you will see as of tomorrow, so I'm doing this a day off, so we've got about 10 days left on this particular book. And as you can see, it is this book right here. And this book is 20 or $30 on Amazon. And by the way, if Humble Bundle has expired by the time you watch this video, don't stop. I'm not doing this just because the Humble Bundle is on. I will also toss an Amazon link to this book. This book is worth the full purchase price if it is suitable for you. So let's decide that right about now. So what is this book all about? Well, here I'm going to basically jump into the introduction and you're gonna find specifically where the authors themselves are targeting this book towards. You see, this book fills a gap that is left by other books on graphics, linear algebra, simulation, and programming. It's an introductory book, meaning that we focus our efforts on providing thorough coverage on fundamental 3D concepts. Topics that are normally glossed over in a few quick pages or relegated to an appendix in other books, because you already know this stuff, we have found that these very topics are very often the stickling points for beginners. And I agree with that 100%. If you have a mastery of vector graphics and matrix math and all of those things, you already understand how to calculate a normal or normalize a vector. If all of those things are just second nature to you, the first third of this book isn't really that useful. Now, the, the last two thirds definitely still are. But if you're like me and you come from a background where I have... Um, well, I have an OAC level education, which is basically the equivalent of a 101 university level course. They don't have it anymore in Ontario, but that was a fifth year advanced math program is about what I took. And for the most part, that level of knowledge is enough for most game programmers. In all honesty, you really just need to have that, that first year university, college, or last year advanced high school level understanding of math to get by in game development. Unless of course you are doing real time renderers, you're writing them yourself and that kind of thing. But this book kind of gets you in at that ground floor. So it assumes you know things like, you know, math and fractions and um, exponents and that kind of stuff. But it doesn't assume that you understand vector math or how to multiply matrices together. But it also doesn't overly dwell on those subjects. So I really like that about this book. Uh, it is a good on-ramp for beginners. It doesn't mean they'll be stuck in the slow lane forever. There's plenty of material here. And I agree with that 100%. They're not talking up their ass on that. They did a good job there. They've also got a very unique approach. And I'm going to actually kind of, we're going to look at this in specific. Now they don't get really heavy into math. And that's where another books lose me. I don't really care about the mathematic proof of how an equation works. I just want to know the equation. I, I'm not digging in to be an advanced math master. And I think a lot of you are probably in the same boat. And what they're saying, nowadays you can go over to Wikipedia or Wolfram Math World and get the proofs there. So we don't bother with that material. And I agree with that as well. But also what they kind of done here is there is a unique writing style. There is a sense of humor here. Uh, and I like it. But if humor rubs you the wrong way, and we're going to look at some of their humor in a second, you're either going to like it or not. But it keeps it from being a drab, hard to read math text, which is another thing I like about this book. And then finally, author's pedigree. So it's two authors, um, one of whom worked at uh, Terminal Reality in Dallas on games such as Blood Rain, um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and the other fellow has written six books, is a doctor, and teaches at school. So that's a good combination. You've got the, the scholastic side of things, and you've got the practical side of things covered there. And this book is very much geared towards uh, game development, as you get from the title itself. So next up, uh, we're going to look at that example of humor I was talking about. So here you can see a paragraph where they're talking about. Um, 
So we go here and they're talking about 1D mathematics, so basically sequences or ranges. And they're, they're using the metaphor of basically dead sheep. Millennia ago uh, invented to track dead sheep. Concept of one sheep came easy, then two sheep, three sheep. But very quickly, people came convinced that this was way too much work, gave up counting at some point, and they invented many sheep. Different cultures gave up at different points depending on their threshold of boredom. Eventually, civilization expanded to the point where we could afford to have people sitting around thinking about numbers instead of doing more survival-oriented tasks such as killing sheep and eating them. So that is the kind of reference that they start with. But then you'll notice in the graphics here in the book, we are using one dead sheep, a sequence of dead sheep, and then here we even have ghost sheep to represent the negative column. If you find that in any way at least amusing, you're going to dig this book. If you find that off-putting, hang up now. There's no more reason to go in here. But they do a very conversational point. And at the same time, they also take a very um, real world example. So it's not just abstract and painful to understand math that they're throwing at you. They're throwing some pretty cool stuff at you here. Now, what we're looking at here is another example from the book. And what I like that they do a lot is when they're talking about mathematics, they will often use like real world examples. So instead of just showing a formula, they'll also show here we've plugged the numbers into the formula and here's how it solves out, which I like. But you're also seeing here, here is one of the example code segments they use. The code in here is basically very simple, well-documented, easy to comprehend C code. There was never once where I looked at the C code and went, oh, that was tricky. They don't do anything overly clever. It's very straightforward. And it was designed so that an artist or a non-programmer could also look at the code and go, oh, okay. But never once, they, they promise right up front, do they explain something exclusively in code? So there are code samples for how things are implemented, but they are not difficult. They are not overwhelming and they are not mandatory. So if you're coming at this from a mathematics background as opposed to a programming background, you should be good to go. And next up, we're looking at what they actually cover in this book. So as I mentioned, we start things off with our dead sheep at chapter one. And you're looking at things like basically explaining things like coordinate system, 1D, 2D, 3D math. And then at the end of things, they've got exercises for the viewer, completely optional answers at the back of the book, just like old school com computer tech or uh, educational text did. Uh, then the second chapter, we start getting into things like vectors. We've got a you know, definition of what vectors are, how you define them, and they do a good job of breaking down. So a lot of times where you're going to get confused with mathematics is they assume they know you know what two bars or three bars beside something or a little hat over top of a character means. And if you don't necessarily know what that means, again, this is a perfect book for you because they actually explain that stuff. And they get into things like cross product, what cross product actually is, when you'd use it, how you'd actually use that in the real world, unit vectors, magnitude, and so on. Uh, multiple coordinate spaces. I prayed, I really wish that when I was in grade 12 or 13 uh, mathematics for things like algebra where I couldn't conceive of how I would use this, I wish there was something like this around that. It would have made learning math back in the day so much easier to actually see it applied. And then in chapter three, we get into coordinate systems. In uh, chapter four, we get into matrices. Five matrices and linear trans uh, transformations. Uh, six more on matrices. And, and you know, unfortunately, in game math, matrices are incredibly important. So them dealing with it this long, it does make sense. Then in seven, we get into polar coordinates. Eight, we get into rotation and including um, quaternion. Qua quaternions uh, and quad, quadr, quaternions. I, yeah, I can't speak today. Anyways, they are like one of those most scary, daunting things. It's basically just a four-dimensional number uh, so that you don't run into problems such as gimbal lock in your rotation, which also, by the way, is explained under Euler, Euler angles. Um, and they make it actually readable and understandable. And it's one of the first sources I've seen that explains quaternions, ha, I think I got it there, uh, in a good manner. Uh, and that's why an area where this book definitely shines because a lot of people do a real crap job of explaining that. So if that's the kind of thing where you have fallen on your face in the past with math books, this one again will shine for you. But then we get into, now we're kind of getting into the stuff for people that already know their math, uh, this is more um, actual applied to game, more of like a cookbook style approach from now on. So now we're looking at how geometric primitives work. Now this book is pretty much agnostic from, if you're working with Vulkan, or you're working with OpenGL, you're working with DirectX, it doesn't really matter. Um, there are some shader examples here in uh, HLSL, which is the shader format for DirectX, but you'll be able to apply that just as well to GLSL. So really, this is a implementation agnostic book for the most part. So we're getting geometric primitives, mathematical topics for 3D graphics, such as viewing in 3D, polygonal, polygonal mesh, texture meshing, skeletal animations, bump mapping. And each of these things gets, you know, 20 pages a piece. So these things are not just glossed over. And then we get into mechanics number one. We get linear and kinematic calculus. 
Uh, so things like motion, uniform circular motion, instantaneous velocity derivatives, average velocity. And then the second part of mechanics, we get into Newton's, Newton's three laws, some simple force laws, momentum, impulsive forces and collisions, rotation dynamics, real-time rigid body simulations. So we got some real applied hands-on stuff here. Once you've finished and, and comprehended this book, you could create your own very simple physics engine. But that is quite a ways to go from knowing nothing about math to creating simple physics in one book. And then we get into curves. Um, curves, this is where your brain may melt just a little bit. Um, and then we get some straight up uh, kind of hands-on applied tests, things like, you know, how close to a point, intersections between two things, axis aligned bounding boxes, spheres and planes, uh, ray in an axis aligned bounding box. This kind of stuff is pretty much the nuts and bolts of everyday game development. And then finally, you get all the various different answers to the questions that have been asked throughout. And there is one more page to the table of contents, but there was nothing really relevant to it. So I didn't bother explaining it. And um, yeah, yeah, that is it. So this is a 3D math primer for graphics and game development. And I have to say of all of the computer math books I have ever read at the we'll call it the introduction to intermediate level. This one has hands down been the best. It's the easiest read for me. It's not too dry. They walk through with enough detail. They cover the basics, which may not be so basic to a lot of people. And then they kind of get into more advanced stuff. And then after this, you can move on to all those other math books out there. Actually, hell, some of the math books that will be included in here that, you know, they just assumed that you knew how all this math worked. Well, now you'll be able to actually approach those books because you do have the basics down. And again, this is a book I have had access to in the past and I absolutely love it. And I recommend if you are struggling in the slightest with 3D math, um, let's put it this way. This book will teach you, in my humble opinion, 95 to 99% of the mathematics that a typical game programmer needs to know to do game logic. And again, if you want to write game engines, you're going to have way more stuff after. You're going to have to start learning things like advanced lighting models uh, and volumetrics and fluids and portals and real-time shadowing and such. That is much more complex stuff than what we're dealing with here. But this is the stuff that the day-to-day -day gameplay programmer should know. So if you're just starting out in game development and you want to get the fundamentals of mathematics and you have your high school equivalent basics down, you understand um, some basic algebra and calculus and so on. This again is in my opinion, the perfect book. If you can stomach the sense of humor. Now some people hate humor. And again, some people want a much more formulaic computer or mathematic text treatises, and this is not that. This is very conversational. Um, they, they explain things as opposed to just here presenting it to you, and some people that might drive batty. But if you want that little bit more explanation, that is why I strongly recommend this book. And uh, yeah, that was it. I think that's my first real thorough book review that I've done. Let me know if there's something that you would like to see different if I review another book. Also, let me know if there's another book you're interested in. The next one I'm actually jumping into is this graphic shaders book that's also included here. Because to be honest, my shader knowledge is... Yeah, it's okay, but not great. So I got to get my understanding of shaders much tighter. So I'm going to be going through that one. I can't tell you if it's a good book like this one or not, but I can tell you straight out, 3D Math Primer for Graphics and Game Development is a stellar title if you are its target audience. Oh, and the coolest thing is I have a humble bundle key for this whole package. So I will give that away just... Um, comment down below, uh, pick a comment at random. I'm gonna, if you win, I will ask you for your email address, get you to send off to me and uh, I will shoot you out the key and you can get all of this for free anyway. So uh, if you wanna enter, just make a comment down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.